So my poor cinnamon roll Hiruma just had to face his absolute worst fears. And I mean, we already got a taste of this man's power in terms of what he can make people see. But when you have someone who lived in such an abusive situation as Irma, like as much as they directed in comedic ways, like, oh, you know, the parents are more or less fishing Irma to a shark and they animate it in a very cute and simplistic way. When you really consider the hell that this kid went through his entire life, imagining an ability that can pry into your mind and expose your deepest and darkest fears. And for Irma, it's so much worse than most people because it's not even just like the, the way it gets horrible for him is that his parents, he sees his parents, and they're like, time to go home, you're the boy who always says yes. Instead of it just being his parents, we literally see Irma's fear is actually more complex than just that. That's definitely the biggest scar and his biggest worry. But most importantly, he's made a legit connection to people from best grandpa to these friends and honestly family at this point. And the fact that he sees all of them say different things to him, even when he recognizes that it is a nightmare and it's clearly an illusion of some sort, he can't help but shake in fear. And I really felt bad for the boy. I might even go as far to say out of the 12 episodes that we've seen of this season, honestly, I think this one was my favorite. Not to discredit any of the prior episodes, but there was something about seeing Irma at his most vulnerable, but then arguably rise to his highest potential we've ever seen. I mean, we knew at some point we we're going to see some badass things with the bow, I just wasn't expecting it in this episode and to see not only the training that went into be able to do that which something I've been complimenting this entire season is the use of flashback mixed in with the present day content because the Harvest Festival is kind of like a hurrah it's a big hip hip hooray for all the misfit class seeing what they went through training wise some of which we've already seen I mean we saw a lot of your mis training up to this point but even here we can introduce more flesh it out so when he does this crazy powerful move it never feels like things are being pulled from thin air which is something a lot of shonen battle series get wrong is that they unlock it in the middle of a life or death situation or an intense moment but you really don't feel like they earned it right it was something that just conveniently happened here with Irma, I mean, you can't say any of these characters with their newfound skills conveniently did something. No, like, they worked their asses off, and I mean, some of them were literally being drowned in a waterfall as someone cried tears for them. Like, there was some intensity to this, and that's what made it nice, is that this was, without a doubt, I think, one of the hardest to look at moments for Irma. It's not to say that I actually thought Irma was about to be tossed from the netherworld back into a even more hell-forsaken environment, that being his parents. But it's the fact that he just was legit crushed. He was legit scared. And I think what makes it so hard to watch at times is like at the beginning, he's actually trying to say no. Like he's building up the confidence and they just ignore him. And every which way you look at it, it just felt like we were watching an abused boy trying to escape his abusive household. And no matter what he does, it felt like it was completely helpless. And I think from seeing him absolutely break down and cry to just these numerous reactions, I love that rather than making it so Irma had to be saved, he saved himself. He broke free from that nightmare. And the fact that all of his hard work, it almost felt like more so than just showing him do a cool bow attack and say, you know what? bad parents be gone. Instead, it felt like Irma for the first time could actually stand up to his parents and he broke free of the last chain holding him down because Irma never really talks about his parents right we got a bit of that in season one but for the most part he doesn't touch upon that if something reminds him of his parents he doesn't bring that up because who would that's a pretty nasty scar and clearly he probably still had some worry that what happens if he does have to go see them again someday right I mean we you could argue well he got sold off but here's the thing what if they need him for the next scheme that they wanted to do they absolutely would probably try to get him back so the fact that even though it was fake it almost felt like Irma was letting go of the last bit that was holding him back to his prior family and now can fully embrace his true family knowing that even when an illusion tells him all these lies he knows the truth and that he is going to stay there that he does have a family and friends that actually care for him now and he's no longer the boy getting dangled in front of a beast because the parents are just horrible people. And I think that's what makes it such a beautiful moment that it remains badass, great animation, great hype moment, but unlike a lot of shows with these types of moments, here there's actually substance. There's a reason for why he can do it with the backstory, the training, and everything we've experienced. There's the prying into the emotional fear and worry about the viewer and Irma himself. And I feel like he actually broke away from that shackle holding him down still, something that he shies away from, the fears that he legit still has. The fact that he can break free from that and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to do this. And honestly, it's hard not to be inspired by the boy. 
And really, when you compare the innocent, adorable, frightened kid he was at the start of this show, thinking all the demons were going to eat him, look at what he's willing to do to basically protect them at this point. I absolutely love it. The intro was actually pretty fun. I like just seeing the kind of flustered, flirtatious little... I still think it looks like Snow Run. I had a, f a couple of people reaffirm my kind of thought process that it looks like a humanoid Snow Run, adorable character in general. But I love the fact that Irma's was like having a, like a kind of midlife crisis here not knowing what the hell to do because okay do we split the points now three ways do I give half my points so that you know someone likely doesn't have to deal with it it was just some nice little stuff and I think it was kind of brilliant because you don't really expect anything to get too crazy given how they start the episode and then he falls and just everything gets worse and worse and worse and honestly I just love the concept of anything that pries into emotions those negative emotions and the way that this man has been doing it here he's a force to be reckoned with I think arguably that's the only character we've seen uh, that could really put a damper on any of the misfit class winning and he's doing it without really breaking a sweat hell he got someone to punch and get eliminated and we almost eliminated Irma hell he didn't even care if Irma died doing that like there's some intense for sure but that's what we love about season three of Demon School. It is really nice though that rather than just sticking in the same location they actually decide to spice up the location in this episode like you have this like this cavern was so majestic it just was so beautiful and I think that's another thing that made it so great is that the directing doesn't make it feel like it's going to be a uh, horrifying or nervous episode right if anything like yeah they might fight something in this cavern but it's not going to be like demons are going to come out and they're going to make you face your, your deepest and darkest fears but Irma's like one of those shows that's so good at subverting expectations demon school Irma kun you'd think it's going to be some harem school show with you've seen it a dozen times before season one became something so memorable and special and the fact that it just baited me in thinking it was going to be a very different feeling style episode yeah we might see an attack of some sort but it's not going to be like Irma is going to be crushed and we're going to see him actually legit tears of sorrow and the way that they can let him reach his absolute lowest to then arguably reach his absolute highest I mean it's just hard not to feel proud of how far Irma has grown and why it's so easy when Sullivan's always gushing about his grandson why you say even if he's a little overreactive I mean it's hard not to feel as proud as he does at times even if sometimes does compliment him just for walking and waking up in the morning I mean a lot of times though Irma does deserve that praise and this episode is definitely one of them. Like I said, probably my favorite episode of the season and arguably one of my favorite episodes that we've seen a period in this show, but let me know what you thought down below. I thought this was a rather emotional episode. Very nice bait and switch in terms of thinking that, you know, obviously the parents weren't actually going to be there, but I mean, the fact that the fears were so much more complex than just that, it was his entire fear of his world shattering. I thought it was brilliant, but let me know what you thought down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. There is full live reactions available on my Patreon for a bunch of different shows I'm covering this season. You get video shadows, a bunch of other fun stuff as well. So do consider that if you so wish. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.